So first of all, open a new Blender file and you'll see I have my file ready to go here. You can just click on the side and we'll be able to open this file here. I just added a few settings so it is, it is easier for me to explain what I'm doing. But uh, for now, we're just going to use this default cube. We're going to go into front view. We're going to lift this cube up slightly right till about there. That's just leaving out nice spacing for the legs. And I'll just turn on shortcut video just so you guys can see what I'm doing. And then while in the front view, we're going to scale it slightly in the X, just like that. Then we're going to come into the side view, scale in the Y. And then we're going to come in to the modifiers tab. You can also press control two or control one in this and just add a subdivision surface modifier. Now we're not going to crank that up to two. We're just going to leave it at one and we're going to add one loop cut going down like that. So we've got that, we can come back into the side view and we can just move these. Just make sure that we're in X-ray mode. We can take these vertices, move them back like that, getting that shape of the character. Now, once we've done that, we can go into the bottom view, apply the subdivision surface modifier and disable the obvious disable the X-ray mode. So we can go into edit mode and one for vertex and we can say GX and move this to the side. All we want to do is just create kind of a, a, a rough hexagon shape just to basically make a better shape here to extrude the legs from. So after this we're going to take these two vertices and just scale them in the Y. It doesn't have to be a perfect hexagon. These can actually be a little bit um, more out than these two. And I think that's fine. We're going to press 3 for face select, select two faces into the front view and extrude in the Z. We'll press Z twice there because we first have to cancel the normal extrusion and then activate the Z axis. Now once we're there, we can say S, Z and scale it for zero to align those lines nicely. Now you'll notice that we don't have a left side like this to basically form symmetry. So what we're going to do is we're going to enable X-ray mode again. We're going to select all these faces, X, delete faces. Once we've done that, we can come into the modifiers tab again and add a mirror modifier and that would sort it out. Make sure that the axis is the X axis and then it should be fine. From here, what we want to do is we want to add another subdivision modifier. And this time we're still going to leave it at one. We're going to tab into edit mode, not applying anything yet because we just want to come in here and fix up the legs a bit. And we can put one more loop cut and make sure that they are going down nice and straight. We've done that. We can actually apply the mirror first because I'm going to apply the subdivision first and then you'll see what I mean. It creates a very ugly line there that you're going to have trouble with down the line. And if you do too many things, you won't be able to come back to the shape. So I'm just going to undo that and we'll apply the mirror first and then the subdivision. Once that's done, we can come into front view disable the x-ray vision, enable edit mode, three for face select, and then go into select circle. Actually, before we do that, we want to be in select box, one for vertices, and we just want to manipulate these vertices so they give us a better geometry to extrude the mask from. So once we've got it up to about there, we just want to come into top view and align them nicely again with the rest of the mesh so that we don't make any awkward topology over here. Once we've got that, we can press three again, go into circle select, select all these faces and extrude. And now it's gonna extrude this in its along its normal, which is exactly what we want. Now when it's there, we can press inset, just slightly scale it down just to give that gap and then extrude it back again on that same normal. That's it for the mask and then we're going to come back here and create the backpack. Now this is the easy part because you just have to select these faces, extrude in the Y until you have a length that you are happy with. Now just for when we do the next subdivision surface modifier, we want to add a loop cut here so that this keeps its shape quite nicely 
and optionally you can add a little bit of an indentation here just to make everything slightly more believable I'm just going to enable select box again and select this side along the edge here now you can either press scale or alt s for scale along normals and you can just create a nice indentation there and you can even move this slightly in the y to make it look a bit better now we're going to have something like that after this is complete we can add another subdiv modifier i, I press ctrl 2 you can also do it in the modifier tab once we've got this we can right click and say shade smooth and there is the base of our character and then we're going to apply this modifier and then we'll move on to the next step okay so once we're here what we want to do is we actually want to separate the materials from the character from the mask from the body we want two materials so we're going to go into edit mode i just put a loop cut here just to create a better form here for the mask but we'll go to face select and we'll select these two loops with shift select and alt for selecting loops and then shift control just to select that entire front tab and then after that we'll come into the shading tab and we'll just go into the object tab here and create two slots and assign the mask to the second slot and then when we're done doing that we can actually just quickly do a nice camera and lighting setup so that we can see our textures good first of all we want to create our camera shot we can if we want to add a ground plane scale that up and just let me just lock my camera to view we go into view lock camera to view and that won't uh, move when we move or it won't go out of camera mode anymore so we can go back into camera view and just tilt it until we have it nicely over the ground plane and we have a nice we can actually just move this G and then shift Z just to move it along that plane and then once we have something like that we can start working on the lighting we can actually pull this tab like that when our cursor makes a little cross and then we can go out of the camera mode here into the side view we can switch this to rendered view and then we can take our ground plane G Z and we can move it up now I have already done some rendering settings but basically I've just added a sun sunlight if you want to do that you can say shift a light sunlight and then we'll just rotate it a bit like that and then we go into the Y and rotate it a bit to the side to create that nice shadow there and what I've also done is I've gone into the rendering tab and I've limited my samples to 64 and my time limit is on 30 seconds and I've just dropped my exposure a bit but I think it might be a little bit too low so I'll just move that up to about 0.4 and then we can also just increase the power of the sunlight to about 2 or 1.5 just to get a nice contrast going and then when you're happy with your lighting and camera setup we can go straight through to shading so we can go at the top here and we can click on the shading tab that will bring up our character like this in the camera shot and we can just right click on it and we have two slots ready to go now first of all we just want to take this and set the base color to red and once we've done that we can actually just bring in some surface imperfection so we're going to go shift a add a converter and a color ramp we can connect this color ramp into the roughness and then what I like to do is I like to bring in an overlay a stain overlay and it's a 1k image but it will do for this for this model and you can just drag it over but if you want you can use an image texture you'll press shift a add image texture and go with the open image icon and once you've got that in there you can just put this into the, the little connector there and then you can start playing 
with the different settings. Before we do anything though, I would like to actually put this, it is in cycles, uh, and I actually do want to add an HDRI. So I use HDRI, uh, Easy HDRI. It's a free add-on that I got from GitHub, but if you don't have that, you can just shift A, texture, environment texture, and add your HDRI. What I like to do is, I like to create world, world nodes, and then luckily I already have my HDRI loaded in, so I just put them in like that. And then that will also create a bit of extra lighting and just bring a bit more life to our character, show a bit more reflection, and that will be more apparent when we start working on the mask. So going into the slot two here, what we want to do is we want to add new and we want to delete the BDSF shader or BSDF, the principal shader. And we just undo that, just make sure you only select the principal. And once we delete that, we can press Shift A and add a glass BDSF. Now with the glass, we can actually connect that to the surface. And then we can add a converter color ramp, connect it to the roughness. And we want to take the IQR and put it at 0.25. And then we can actually add texture, image texture, and connect that to the factor. And luckily our stains are already in here, so we can just add our overlay. Um, now you can just play with the values here to make sure the stains look exactly like you want them. When you have this, all that's needed to be done is it's already looking good. We just want to basically make the texture look a little better because if I render this now, you'll see that we are actually sitting with something that's not looking 100% right. The texture is a little bit big and it doesn't look be really good quality. So we can just exit that and we can cheat a little bit actually. We can select all or just undo that, we can select the first faces, we can say UV unwrap faces, smart UV project, and OK. Once we do that, we can come into the UV editor, select all, and just scale up those UVs to make that texture a bit smaller, because it is only a 1K texture and is not very high resolution. But we don't really need much more for this model, especially if we scale it up a bit and make sure It's just a good resolution. So after that, we can do the same for slot one. We can just press Control I to invert the selection and select all and scale up those vertices. And then we can say UV unwrap faces, smart UV project. You might have to scale them up again. That's obviously no problem. And then you can come in here and just play with the dials until you have something that is satisfying and you can do the same for slot one you can just come in here and see what looks what looks the best where and you can also do that in material preview and it might give you a little bit better look at what's going on And I believe that will look quite good. So once we're happy, we can go to rendering again. It's looked a little bit light, so we actually want into the base color here. We can change it a bit to a bit of a bluish color, and then we can bring it down to about here. Once we have that, we can actually bring the exposure down a bit more because it is quite bright, something like that. And then it's time to press render.